Welcome back to Echo Ridge, where today we're going to start a little city. Now, I used to play City Skylines a fair bit, but to be honest, the last time I played was probably 2019. And the first thing I can tell you is there are a lot more maps. And starting a new city here, I'm just sort of shooting from the hip. Now, you may have seen from the intro screen that I own most of the large DLC packs. The only ones I really haven't kept up to date with are some of the radio stations and the creator packs. But the rest of them I should have, hence the reason why there are so many maps to choose from. Now, being that this is a vanilla run, and I'm not using a single mod, for one, I still have a lot of achievements to get, but for two, since it's the first time we've played it on the channel, I kind of want to start from the bottom up. So we'll probably add mods in the future, but for this first city, I want to keep things kind of simple. So I think we'll go ahead and start with one of these base game maps. With the risk being that this game is now about eight years old, which means these maps have had plenty of coverage. I think we're going to go ahead and start with two rivers. I like the fact that they have all the natural resources, which will give us plenty of options. It's got a decent building area at 78%. Oh, wait a minute though, it doesn't have any ship connections. That sort of limits us a little bit. Okay, this one looks a little bit better. River Run has a 76% area for building, has all the outside connections available, and all the natural resources. Now what to do about a city name. This is probably going to be the hardest decision I have to make in this entire series. Ah yes, this will do nicely. The ever creative Ridge City. We'll go ahead and start, and of course we're going to leave random disasters on. This is still Echo Ridge Gaming. And here we are. Welcome to Ridge City. I think in this first city, we're going to be going for a sort of as realistic as possible, but not overdoing it sort of gameplay. Okay, one of the first things I got to figure out is how do I get rid of all the clouds? Nobody wants to see the clouds on the video. Now to start off with, we need to figure out where to tie in our city. We have two highway connections, one on the right side and one on the left side. And already I don't know which way is north. So we're just going to go with whatever camera position we have. Now I understand some folks might be inclined to sort of make a highway connection crosses the entire map right off the rip. And unfortunately this would be a mistake. As we only start the game with $70,000. I think we're going to start from this interchange here. Mostly because there's more room on this side of the river before we're going to have to pay for an expensive bridge to be able to cross. Now to start off with, we only have access to one road type. That's the two lane road. So we're just going to connect the incoming and the outgoing traffic, just like this. There's a couple of problems with this. First, we don't know Terry Cook, and they certainly don't deserve a road here in our wonderful city. We do know a Travis Wyatt, though. As a way of saying thank you, we're going to be naming all the roads and streets, and probably some neighborhoods and some historical buildings, after YouTube and Patreon members. But the other problem with this road is it's sort of messing with the traffic flow. This is one way coming down here, but this is a two-way street. Well, now that we placed our first road, we've actually unlocked a couple of more options. Here's our wonderful one-way road now. And by using it and the upgrade tool, we can upgrade this road to a proper one-way road. So now the traffic flow will come in and just loop around. Unless, of course, they decide they'd like to stay here at Ridge City. Now, I like to start this sort of main road with a standard two-lane road. But we're not going to be building anything off this road because it's the sort of main avenue of our city. Instead, we're actually going to connect a bunch of dirt gravel roads. Yeah, they don't look as good, but considering they only cost 20 per cell and 19 cents a week in upkeep versus $40 a cell for the two-lane road and 32 cents a week, especially in the early game, this is the way to go. And will somebody please tell me what the money in this game is called? Because that symbol sure doesn't look like dollars and cents. And here's the very beginning of our beautiful road network. Now, in full disclosure, I'm not a big fan of grids, as I like to make the cities as natural looking as possible, at least within the confines of my ability. But there are some places where grids sort of make sense, like in downtown areas that this area is no doubt going to end up as. But the more we spread into sort of a neighborhood and suburban area, we'll get a little craftier with the road network. What is this dilapidated building inside of Ridge City? Now before we put down any zoning, we're going to need power and water. And I can tell you one of the differences from the last time I played is the addition of the Eco Water Outlet. And I'll be looking to upgrade the dirty water drain pipe, but right now, as far as our economy goes, the water drain pipe only costs 2500 
with a 320 upkeep for 120,000 cubic meters per week. Compare that to a $4,000 upfront cost and a 480 upkeep per week for only 60,000 cubic meters? Yeah, we can't use the Eco Water Outlet quite yet. With the flow of our river going this way, we're gonna put a wonderful water pump right here and then a water drain pipe right here. That way all that disgusting sludge goes down the river. We'll clean that up later. Now time to add some horribly expensive and very long water pipes. There we go. And now for the water pump doing the same. Now for power, we have the same options that I'm used to, and that's the wind turbine and the coal power plant. And once again, this is a no brainer. We can use the coal power plant with 40 megawatts for 19,560 upkeep per week or the wind turbine. And as you can see, we don't have any really strong wind areas until we get out of this initial square. So we're gonna be sticking to the reliable coal power plant and looking to upgrade it in the future. And because these power lines cost 48 cents a piece, we're gonna make sure we take the quickest route over to our power plant and then do the same to get over to our sewage plant or rather water drain pipe. And with our essential services in, it's time to actually start some zoning. We'll put a little bit of residential here and a little commercial here. Now you'll notice that I don't butt up the commercial directly to this avenue. And there's a good reason for that. I don't want anybody driving on this avenue to then whip into a business or a house. I want them to instead take these little side roads down here and that way Miko Nala Avenue stays as free flowing as possible. Speaking of which, can somebody tell me why we only have a 94% traffic flow when we have not unpaused and there are no cars in the entire city? We will also add a little bit of industrial here. Not too much because I like to go very easy on the heavy pollution stuff. Now, one thing that you're gonna have to keep me clear on is I have a bad habit of mixing up industrial and residential because the colors look the same. And I say that because I'm looking at it right now and it looks like I've already done that. Cause I think this is industrial. We'll just go ahead and dezone that and pretend like it never happened. Welcome to Echo Ridge Gaming, the most proficient gaming channel on YouTube. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more residential and just a smidge worth of commercial just to make sure everything is connected via power. In fact, I already know we don't need 100% budget for electricity. We're gonna go ahead and drop that down to 50%. Same thing with our water. We don't wanna be spending the massive amount of upkeep for a coal power plant when most of it's not gonna be used. So as you can see, by reducing it down to 50%, we now have a potential power output of 10 megawatts. And without further ado, we'll go ahead to the ribbon cutting ceremony here at the corner of Miko Nala Avenue and Travis Wyatt Street. Ridge City is open for business. Seriously, anybody, come on in. There's not a single car on the entire highway. Apparently these construction companies are walking here because I still haven't seen a single car. And the first home is complete and it's the Lafayette residence. It's a multi-family home with enough room for three families. And apparently, just like that, eight adults and one child moved in. There wasn't a single moving van, nor did I see a taxi drop these people off. Seriously, where are the vehicles? One of my favorite parts of this game is the road and traffic management. I can't manage any traffic when there's no cars. Hey guys, you want to stop by? What about you? Hello? Ridge City is open. Come drive on our streets. And the first business here in Ridge City is open, and it's a Sally's. Apparently, Sally's is a general store. Now, as the usual with City Skylines, there's going to be a lot of residential demand at the beginning. So you're going to be spending much of your time just zoning more residential. And this will be sort of the way of things for a little while. And that's okay, because it'll allow you to stop and smell the roses as you add more and more residential zoning. We have our first vehicle inside of Ridge City. It's an ore truck. No, don't leave, buddy. You can stay. Oh, uh, never mind. Here come the cars now. Apparently, it just takes a little while for the people with cars to decide they want to move in. I also like to make sure the main avenues and roads in your city are set to priority. It changes the signage a little bit. People will be able to fly down this road, but they'll have to come to a stop before they turn on and off of it. This will help you with your traffic flow. We're getting a little bit more demand for industrial. Not a big deal. So we're going to play their ebb and flow games. But eventually I'll want to upgrade this to either all high tech industry or office buildings or a mixture of the two. But we're a long ways away from that. We have to put schools down and make sure we have a more educated workforce before we can make a transitions like that. Not to mention, the game doesn't give you a lot to start with. 
Hence the reason why, in the early game, you're pretty much just building roads and more zones. We've got our residential demand back up, and it's a good thing because we're starting to slow down on population growth with only 30 to 35 more people moving in every week. So we will continue the expansion game here, there, and everywhere. I think that looks good. Now we're probably going to keep extending the city going this way to start off with, because it's what's going to eventually end up as our high density area. The further we go onto this side of the map, I'm going to want to start adding in some suburban areas. In fact, we can go ahead and start that now just for some funsies. Now economically, this is probably not the best, because designing your roadways before you need them is just an increasing cost. No Walker Drive, this is still Glen Sullivan Drive. But with those future blocks sort of planned out, we now have an area where we can be fairly confident of where the suburban area is going to start. And I think in this case, it's probably going to curve over this way to stay away from the highway traffic noise. There's a good start there. But now we don't have to get too complicated to start with. We're just going to come straight off of Glen Sullivan with a straight road, maybe to here. And then we'll sort of curve it in. Now, City Skylines is one of those games where it's probably not the best to be anal retentive because I'll sit here for 20 minutes trying to make the perfect roadway just to design a wonderful little neighborhood. It really is excessive. Now I know Zadnax Road doesn't look like a lot right now, and that's because it's not. But eventually this will be an absolute wonderful little neighborhood. And we're going to start the zoning something like this. Now I'm not going to fill in these four yet because I want this to create its own little small house first and then we'll add another one next to it. Now luckily, because of our water lines having to go all the way down to the water output, Zadnax Road already has water service, except it looks absolutely horrible. So we're gonna go ahead and fix this really quick. Okay, it's not great, but at least the pipes are under the road. The people are desperate for some more heavy industry, so who am I to say no? But this is probably as far as I'm gonna be willing to take it. Now I'd love to show you the effect of all this pollution other than the sort of smog that's growing up out of the city. Unfortunately, I don't even have access to the information panes yet. And here's an example of why you don't start with suburban neighborhoods. There's no power services out here. So now we have to spend more money just so the Barlows can have power to their home. But now that the Barlows have moved in, we can actually add another house. We could have also done this by waiting for some one by twos. In fact, we'll wait and see what the one by twos look like. And maybe this will be that sort of neighborhood. Now as a reminder, like I said in the beginning, I haven't played in a long time. And this is a vanilla run without mods. So I am bound to make some mistakes. So please feel free to go ahead and Monday morning quarterback me down in the comments below. It's been a while since I've played, and I'm looking forward to getting up to speed as quickly as possible. And it looks like it's time to up the power budget already. We're starting to have some brownouts. So we'll go up to 75% on both the water and the power just to make sure that we keep increasing the budget as the city grows. One thing is for sure, I don't want people parking on Miko Nala Ave. I'm sure we'll get to the point where we unlock some roads where that's not possible. Oh my goodness, it's a hot dog van. Bye hot dog van. Because like I said, one of my favorite things about City Skylines is the traffic management. Speaking of which, look how they're able to just run right down Miko Nala. This is due to us making this a priority road. That's opposed to the car having to stop to gain access to it. And just like that, we've had a population of 460, so we've made Ridge City into a little hamlet. Now this milestone's unlocked the ability to take out loans, adjust taxes, along with some services of garbage, healthcare, and education. And in those services, we've unlocked the medical clinic, and if the game still operates like I remember, this is going to be the first thing they start complaining about is trash. The elementary school, the recycling center, and the community school. All right, Ivy residents, why don't you have enough water? Like you're on the water line. Oh, I just realized if I turned off snapping, I could make these water pipes perfect. Oh, we're gonna have to redo them. We'll go ahead and pause it, deconstruct these old ugly pipes, and then add in some of these beautiful right under the road. Oh, absolutely wonderful. Look how they just follow the road right around. Perfection, huh? And now the Ivies have water service. Congratulations. Speaking of which, we can add some more houses here. And right on cue, they start complaining about trash. And unfortunately for us, there's actually not too many things we can do about it. The only options we have are the horrible landfill site at $4,000 upfront cost with 160 upkeep a week and the recycling center. Except 
Even if you put down the recycling center, it just makes less garbage pile up. So you're going to have to put down a landfill site no matter what. And this looks like a perfect spot right off of Ryan Healy Lane. Elsewhere on services, we have the small medical clinic and the elementary school. That's it. Now, every once in a while in these residential zones, we'll have a small commercial area. And in this case, I think it's going to be this block here. So I'm sorry to report residents right off of Andrew Thomas Drive. You are gone. But we're going to make everybody happy with a brand new medical clinic. Now, to start off with, your medical clinic says it has an upkeep of 400. Well, unfortunately, budget cuts being what they are, I don't think so. We don't have that many people, so we're going to drop that down to 50%. And now, as you can see, our upkeep's at 200, and we still have two ambulances on the road. I told you, folks, I'm here for some proficient traffic management and some shrewd financial policies. Just in case you're wondering what kind of mayor I'm going to be. Oh, did I mention the absolutely beautiful water pipe design systems? That's right. I'm a multifaceted mayor. Now we need to put down this wonderful elementary school. And I don't like the elementary school in that small little commercial area. So we're going to throw it in the next block over where I think it fits just a little bit better. Our other option was the community school. Now the community school has a student capacity of 250, but costs 12,000 with a 240 upkeep. The elementary school has a student capacity of 300, with a lower upkeep and initial cost. So I really don't understand what the difference is. Now it looks like we only have 95 eligible students, but we have enough teachers to teach 300. That's not gonna do, so it's time for, yes, you guessed it, budget cuts. And why is there a nighttime budget for an elementary school? Now I think in the main part of our episodes, we'll be expanding like this, putting down new services, and generally just sort of playing the game. But I'd like to finish off every episode with a little bit of what I'm going to call Bob Ross time. So for instance here, this elementary school, we'd probably add some nice trees around here, maybe another swing set, some additional parking, that sort of stuff. Except the wonderful developers have locked that behind milestones. I don't have any doodabs or thingamajigs to be able to put down. So we're going to have to wait on the Bob Ross time. Instead, what you will get is some road upgrade time. And I think we're going to go with two lane roads with some sidewalks. You know, safety first. So we'll hit our upgrade tool. Not everywhere to start off with, but some of these areas with increased congestion. Look at those beautiful sidewalks. Hey, buddy. Mr. Jeremy Green resides at the Moore residence and is a grounds worker at Garments Limited. <laughs> oh, no, not anymore. Your name is now Brian Matzik. Let's see if we can follow Brian around throughout the course of the game and see what they're up to if they just don't disappear into the ether. I don't know how that works. Maybe there's a sort of list where I can see everything I've named. We can go ahead and click on Brian's name and find out where they are in the city. So there you have it. The first episode in our wonderful new City Skyline series. Now I'm not 100% sure how this video is going to come out after I get done editing it. Because quite frankly, I've never made a City Skylines video. So I appreciate your patience as I learn how to make good quality City Skylines content. Speaking of which, I'm going to be keeping an eye on how this series does. Personally, I'm very excited about adding a little bit of variety to the channel. Of course, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. So if you're one of the folks that wants to continue to see City Skylines being covered on the channel, please do the things that lets me and YouTube Analytics know that you enjoy this type of content, such as liking the video and commenting below. Another reason why I'm excited about covering some City Skylines is Paradox is hosting a big reveal either one or two days after this video is coming out. And I believe one of the new games that they're going to announce, or at least fingers crossed, is going to be City Skylines 2. And I know I don't have to tell many of you, that game's going to be massive. So once again, I hope you enjoyed this inaugural trip to Ridge City. So until next time, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.